Good morning. It's, uh, we've been telling you that it's a little quiet across Asia, but there's a lot of stock-specific action that we're going to have our eye on, and our research team is standing by with the CNBC TV18 list of top stocks to watch. And uh, kicking things off is uh, Vinny, Vinny, who is our uh, new in-house expert on all things transportation, among uh, other things and other sectors. Vinny, uh, so uh, kick it away. I guess uh, we're talking about EVs, and Hero is going to be in focus because of that. Okay. Absolutely. Specifically, keeping an eye out on Hero Motor, we could be expecting a positive move. Why? Because Aether Energy, which is backed by Hero Motor Corp, has uh, filed for DRHP just last evening. Now, Hero Motor Corp holds around a 37.2% stake in the company. They're not going to be selling any of their stake, which they're holding. Among the sellers, and this is an OFS that we're seeing, so yes, what we're going to be seeing, seller is going to be uh, Caladium Investment, which is GIC Ventures subsidiary. They will be selling around 47.8% of the total offer of issue that is going to be there. And other than that, we'll have uh, Tiger Global as well as three straight ventures, which will also be offloading some bit of a stake. Now, obviously, we've seen a lot of interest that's been building in terms of the EV side and EV industry. Ola Electric had a good IPO, and that is why we're expecting value unlocking that will be coming in for Hero Motor Corp, given that there's so much interest in the market for the EV space. So keeping an eye out on Hero Motor, a positive move is what we could expect today in the stock. Okay, all right, uh, Vinny, good to have you on board, and thanks a lot for that. Well, let's hop across to Vivek. He's tracking a whole host of stocks, including GMR as well as Startup Power. Morning, Vivek. Well, good morning. You know, very interesting deal coming in from GMR Airports. Now, remember the company that held 64% stake in Dial, which is the Delhi International Airport. Now, you know, yesterday has announced that it plans to go ahead and acquire an additional 10% stake from a minority shareholder that was holding 10%. The minority shareholder was Freb. Fraport AG Frankfurt Airport Services. Now, this particular stake buy will be done at a valuation of $126 million, thereby valuing the airport arm at $1.26 billion. So, post the acquisition, you know, what will be the shareholding of Dial? A minority shareholder, that is GMR Airports, will be holding 74%. The remaining 26% will be held by Airports Authority of India. Remember, the deal is subject to AI's approval as well as the approval of shareholders. The company expects to conclude the deal in the next 180 days. Uh, now, talking about Tata Power, Tata Power has mentioned yesterday that they have commenced solar cell production at the 4.3 gigawatt solar cell as well as the module manufacturing facility that they have in Tamil Nadu. The positive development, the company also expects to go ahead and ramp up production uh, with the remaining 2 gigawatt capacity. So, 2 gigawatt is operational, another 2 gigawatt is expected to be operational over the next 4 to 6 weeks. Remember, the company had committed close to 4,300 crore of capex to go ahead uh, and manufacture both cells as well as modules from this particular facility. <clears throat> All right. Uh, thanks very much, uh, Vivek, for that. Well, let's uh, talk about Dixon and action construction uh, equipment as well. Upasna's details here. Upasna, money. Good morning. First up, let me start with Dixon Technologies, company's wholly owned subsidiary, that is Pagod Electronics, has entered into a MOU with HP India Sales Private Limited to manufacture notebooks, desktops and all-in-one PCs. Company says it will be able to bring a range of HP personal systems to Indian customers and mind you, HP is the leading global provider of personal computing and other digital access devices. Next up is AC on the back of the order win. The company has received order from Ministry of Defence for the supply of 99 forklifts. Hence, even this stock will be in focus. So, all in all, I expect both these stocks to open in green today. Okay, Opasa, thank you very much for that. Let's head back to Vivek. He's watching out for a couple more names, including IRB Infra. Vivek, tell us more. Well, that's right. Whole host of uh, infra companies will be in focus today. First on the list is IRB Infra. Remember, for the month of August, uh, uh, the company has gone ahead and reported the operational toll collection update for both IRB Infra as well as its uh, Inwit. Uh, so the collections have come in quite strong, 502 crore versus 417 crore on a year-on-year -year basis, which is uh, showing a growth of a little over 20% on a year-on-year -year basis, so strong uh, collections. Company also says that they expect the positive momentum to continue and they, in fact, expect it to strengthen uh, with the approaching festive season in the coming months. Uh, in the month gone by, the company says that there was quite a lot of uh, disruptions on account of adverse weather conditions. Uh, talking about Aluwalia contracts, the order win coming in, the company has got 
two group housing projects are at Gurugram. The order values are at 1,144 and 1,163 crore respectively. Remember, the company's order book now stands at a little over 13,140 crore and anticipating an order inflow in the range of 25 to 3,500 crore. So this goes a long way in going ahead and ensuring the company meets its FI25 target. Uh, talking about EG Infra, the company has received a letter of award from MORTH for a road project in Gujarat. The company's bid was at close to 781 crore and the construction period is for two and a half years. The company's order book currently stands at 15,640 and EG Infra expects order inflow in the range of 11 to 12,000 crore in FI25. Okay, all right. Thanks a lot for that, Vivek. Well, let's wind this down then with Manglam, who's joining in to tell us about a couple of those namkeen snack companies. Hey, Manglam. Good morning. So, you know, uh, let's put the clarification out from what uh, has happened in the GST Council meet yesterday. They've gone ahead and uh, cut the rate from 18% to 12% on extruded namkeen snacks. Now, for those who are believing that this would make our bujiyas and all the other namkeens cheaper, perhaps not. Because this is only on extruded namkeen snacks. GST on namkeen and other savoury items like fruit and vegetable chips, bujiyas, snack foods, etc. are already at 12%. So what does extruded snacks include? It is, you know, the likes of your cheese puffs or potato puffs or something like a kurkure, etc. Those may get, uh, you know, aligned from 18% to 12% as all the others are trading at. This rate cut is basically ratification of the earlier discrepancy. So does not mean an immediate benefit for everyone. There would be a sentiment uptick that we would see on names like Bikaji, Pratap Snacks and Gopal Snacks. But the long-term beneficiary of this would be extruded snacks makers, the likes of Britannia and the unlisted players, the ones who make kurkure, etc. Okay, all right, got it. Um, well, <laughs> that's definitely going to be an app appetizing piece of news uh, to watch out for for all the Bujia fans out there. Thanks, Manglam. Let's quickly recap our list of uh, top stocks to watch. The ones that have positive news flow around them are Hero Moto, JMR Airports, Infra, Tata Power, Dixon Tech, Action Construction. RB Infra, Aluwale Contracts, HD Infra, Bikaji Foods and Gopal Snacks. Uh, there's no stock actually on the radar that could open up in the red just purely on the back of news flow. So, going with an all green list today. That's on the equity side. What about the world of commodities? We have Manisha Gupta to join in uh, for a quick wrap of all the overnight action. Manisha, good morning. Morning, Sylvie. Thank you so much for that. Well, I'll start with the crude oil prices, where we have seen 1% of gains in the overnight market. Remember, last week was a 10% decline, and the third quarter till time is 15% down for the crude oil prices. The latest surge of gains or opportunity buying comes in because of supply disruption concerns from tropical storms and sane. Now, this, the, the National Hurricane Center has forecasted that this will strengthen into a Category 2 hurricane before making a landfall on Wednesday. And a lot of uh, facilities there have been shut, evacuated ahead of this. And that is what has added premium to prices. In any case, it was slightly oversold with the kind of declines that we had seen. So some buying is what you are seeing in crude. But there's a bit of a buying that you are seeing across precious metals also. Gold is back above 2,500. Silver prices gained up 2% overnight. Uh, there is a higher chance of 25 basis point trade cut. But ahead of that, you have the U.S. inflation data coming in on this week. You have the CPI numbers on Wednesday and the producer price index on Thursday. So that will keep the markets volatile. Within the base metal prices, it's only uh, perhaps tin, which is trading in the positive, copper a bit as well, but aluminum continues to hold around two-month lows. Iron ore prices near a year low as well. So it's a mixed bag when it comes to the industrial metals. All right, uh, Manisha, thank you very much uh, for that. So, uh, you know, some big moves as far as commodities are concerned. And of course, the large one is uh, uh, iron ore prices, which are now below $90. Uh, for the first time in two years now. We'll take a break. Amnish Agarwal of Prabhuda's leader will be joining in with some fundamental stock conversation that's coming up in just a bit.